Hello? Is anybody out there? Knock, knock, knock. <laughs> well, welcome. And, you know, we'll wait a few minutes before we get started here um, until some people get to join us. But uh, if you're watching on replay, you're already here. So, hello. And uh, say hello, Lisa. Hello, everyone. <laughs> um, I'm Sharon, Texture Junkies. Uh, if you're new, thank you for being here. And I hope that you find encouragement um, to be creative and do it in any way your soul wants. So welcome. And we're live the first and third Saturday of each month. And then I throw little extra videos in in between. Um, we're going to do something really fun today. It's pretty rare for no one to be here yet isn't it? Hmm. Well, that's okay, Lisa. You and I can just play. We'll just get started. Hi, How's that Parker. sound? Well, Julie hi, Parker Julie. Is right here. Hey, Julie, we got what you asked for. You just wait. Yep, yep, we do. I'm sure she saw it in the title. She's probably wondering there. <laughs> be ready for it. Yeah. Okay, so let's just get started, shall we? Um, so one of the things, let me get a drink of coffee here. Kind of ignored it. Mm. One of the things that I've been wanting to do is to make some of the sprays and show you how I do this. Um, some of the, like this one is a Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist. Um, this one has more sparkle in it that I want, but it, we're going to use Walnut Ink and some other inks to create a spray um, and some with a pigment in it. And we are going to see if we can't create something like Tim Holtz's um, Distress Oxide with some titanium dioxide mixed in that white. My guess it's just going to turn tan um, because I'm not sure how he gets that. Let me grab one. You know how you have to shake them. I'm not sure how he gets that to happen. I do have some here that are heavily sprayed from like two weeks ago um, where it changes colors when you get it wet, but we're going to try. We're, we're going to give it a shot like this, like this changed colors in here when it got wet. I, that's beautiful. Um, this one, let's see that you can see the white there. So we're going to see if we can do that. I mean, I'm not sure what makes that happen, but oh, that's so beautiful. Um, but it really uh, makes my soul sing. So let's give it a shot, shall we? And then we're also going to play with some textures um, while we use these sprays. And I have a few different kinds of textures here. Anybody that is, oh, hey, Charmaine. How are you? <laughs> um, welcome. Yeah. The oxidization. We're going to, we're going to try that, um, with the titanium dioxide. Um, uh, it may be something completely different, but let's give it a shot. And the, the point is we're going to play with the walnut crystals and the different mediums to create sprays. I do have one other thing that I want to try. I got on Amazon two of these bottles for $6.99. I already dipped it in something. Look at that. And they are continuous spray. They are intended for like hair, um, uh, you know, beauty, beauty products. But why can't I make like a spray paint with some of my favorite um, walnut crystals and, you know, the ones I use all the time, those kind of colors. Hi, Sarah. Welcome. You posted more gel prints in the group that you did yesterday. I, I think I saw them, Julie. I commented on them. They were amazing. The orange ones. The, yes. The orange ones the iridescent. Ah. The iridescent that looked like it just popped off the page. And you just can't Hi, go wrong with those colors, huh? Hi, Belinda. Welcome. We have Lisa with us today, of course. Um, so let's get to it. Um, like I said, I, I'm going to see if I can't make some some art spray paints with these continuous bottles. Now, I know on Amazon they make, like I ordered a two-pack for 
I know that there are many companies making these. If it works, uh, there are companies that are making them in uh, and selling them in multiples. So you could get like six of these bottles for a price, for a lower price. Um, so you could actually make your own spray paint that way. And you guys know I love spray paint. I can't help it. <laughs> there are more. Oh, you, you posted some more. Awesome. Well, thank you I'll guys. What's that? Hi, Rhonda. Hey, Rhonda. How are you? I do have texture with one of your stencils today. I um, created all kinds of textures for us to sample our sprays with. Uh, and we're going to talk about the ways that you can make uh, different sprays with your inks and your pigments. And it should be fun. Anyway, uh, I'm going to give you some ideas here. And we're just going to go right for it. Um, so the first thing I want to create is I want to see if I can make that um, spray with the uh, oxide. But I don't want to put it in this huge bottle. And then what if I don't like it? You know, so I'm going to put it in something small first and see if it works. Um, and maybe just like a dropper because I could use a dropper of that. Um, like if I'm using, a, say some magicals or some sort of colored pigment and you, you know, sprinkle it on and sometimes you spray it with water, but also a dropper is a good idea. I saw Eddie doing that um, on his latest video with the, oh, those pigments that I've wanted forever. Uh, they're like my rust powder, the paper artsy ones. Um, and I thought that was a great idea. So I know that I'll use it if I have it in a dropper. So that's what I'm going to do. Hi, Yolanda. Hey, Yolanda. How are you? Oh, infusions. Yeah, I couldn't think of the name. I have wanted a set of those forever. They've been on my list. And the reason why, because they don't have sparkle. I, I always look for pigments that don't have sparkle. And because I'm, you know, I don't use a lot of sparkle. Um, and I just want the straight pigments so I can do things like this with them, you know. All right. So first thing, I should put some lotion on, ladies. Sorry about that. First thing I want to do, I'm going to get out my little funnel here, which should be, should have had that out ahead of time. And I know Lisa is also making some things today uh, along with us. Um, so we'll get to compare. She doesn't have walnut crystals, so I clearly need to send her some because one of these jars is like lifetime supply for most people. Most people, I said, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, so I, I will tuck some of these in the mail for you. Um, but let's get this started, and I'm going to move this. We're going to make a mess today, so let's maybe do have one piece out here. And all I want to do first, I should have brought up a little bottle of water. I'll, I have this giant jug. Let me put put it in something here. Um, I can't pour from there. Didn't plan that ahead, did I? Oh, here. Put it in here. Maybe. Maybe this will work. Wrong, wrong lid. So how is everyone? Hanging in there? I can use Hi. the dropper, too. If I need to. But let's get some of that in there. Julia, skin skincare product dropper bottle will work well, or like essential oils, you know, where you've got the built-in dropper. But yeah. You can also you can also buy the droppers. You know, a lot of times uh, pharmacies and drugstores will have them to where you can buy them. There's also medicine like comes in those. Um, not just like essential oils and stuff, but there's just many ways to get those droppers and I save them and I have way too many now. If, if, if you were closer, I would send you one because I have too, <laughs> too many and I'll never use them all. And then my mom keeps bringing me stuff that she found of grandma's. Uh, and in there was some old uh, dropper bottles. I'm looking for my tiny spoon right now that I use for this. Oh, there's a, one of them. Okay, let's see. 
So walnut crystals, if you don't have these, I highly recommend it. We're going to do a few things with these today and see what we can come up with as far as some nice grungier colors that we might use. Because, you know, I don't reach for a bright color very often. And a few walnut crystals would probably do the trick, you know, for making them a little different. So I just put probably way too many in there. We'll see. You guys saw that. I'm going to leave this out. I don't need to close that up. Her famous last words. <laughs> right? So I'm going to stir this first and gauge our color so you can see. And don't worry, we'll be playing with these as well. And if that's too much, uh, too many walnut crystals, then I will... Um, Put a few in one of those continuous spray bottles, just like, you know, a dropper full or so. It's not stirred. It doesn't take much for these to dissolve. And Lisa is using instant coffee today, you guys. Yes, I'm going to be using instant coffee um, instead of just, uh, this is some Nescafe, just some in instant coffee granules. And that's what I'm going to use in place of the walnut crystals. So I am going to put those in my little bottle. Charmaine, what movie? movie? Sorry. They went, just watched the the tween. Tween. they went to see the tween movie. And she said the average age was about 12. <laughs> and um, it, Julie said that she tried Darcy's grungy paper, uh, trying to do the, like the brown packing paper. And she uh -huh. said it did not come natural to her. She she said I you know, being it. flat pack being carefree didn't didn't happen for her. Oh, you know, it's funny because Julie, I I did some brown paper um, yesterday. Actually, I, I will show it to you. It's, um, it's not all done, of course, but I'm gonna have coffee everywhere. So that was too dark. I I did pour some in my big bottle because we do know some is going in there um which one was that that's my dry one isn't it these are actually for alcohol ink but they'll have to do okay Damon, i'm using i'm trying um the nescafe crystals um for instant coffee to see if i can get something similar to what she's making with the walnut crystals uh yeah you can make a funnel with paper Julie just suggested you just, you know, roll it up, make one in. I have a funnel. funnel. I do have a funnel. But Lost. you know where it's at? It's uh, not, upstairs? It's not, not my desk. Well, <laughs> no, but it's, it's across the room. Okay, so, so that that's fine right there. It's maybe a little dark. Um, you guys saw how many crystals I put in there. It wasn't that many, but I ended up having to put some in here because it was so dark. And I always, you know, I always do that. I always end up with more than I realize. And you want it, you know, if there's, it's like, you know, the soluble, I remember doing that in science in school and where it's however soluble it is, like how much water to how much powder, I think, you know, there is a point where it stops dissolving. Um, or it Not needs to Lexi. sit. Hi, Lexi. Lexi. Uh, she's cooking, but she's going to be listening. Oh, thank you for being here. I appreciate that. I hope you're making something good. Okay, so I've got the dry one here. Now, we're going to try to give this some oxidiza oxidization. Oh, my gosh. Why is that so hard to say? Um, <laughs> right? <laughs> So I've got my little spoon here and I'm just going to try a teeny tiny bit and we'll see how it goes. M my guess, these are, let me show you, these are pigments I got and they just came in teeny tiny little packages um, on Etsy. And that is, let me hold that up. That is the people I bought it from. It's still fuzzy. Um, and then I, I actually poked a few holes in these little containers that I put them in so I can shake it. Um, and the label I peeled off the packet to put on here. So I know, but I only got these colors and colors I would use, um, kind of rusty colors. I just wanted to play with them and see 
kind of what happened. Now they're all in my favorites. Oh, yeah, there's a hole in them. <laughs> As I turn them upside down. <laughs> is that the powder, the powder pigments? It is. And they are from D R E W H I T S S O A P on Etsy. Drew it soap. It's, they're intended for soap, but they're, you know, the kind of pig, they're natural earth pigments and they have many, many colors. They're beautiful. And this was me looking for one that didn't have sparkle um, because I didn't want that. You know, if I sprayed that with water right now, it would probably bloom anyway. So let's see if that created a tan. I think I need more. So I'm hoping that it settles to the bottom. And then when you shake it, you can spray it out or, you know, and it acts like the um, uh, Tim Holtz spray. So we'll see. And now I have that on the bottom. Hi, so Diane. You're not hey, Diane. You're, you're here. That's great. Yes. We're glad you're here. So seeing that that didn't do as much as I thought it might, I'm putting... A little bit more in there we'll see okay so now i want to mix it up and one of the things i do when i do a spray or make a color of paint or something i put see it did tan it out i i thought that might happen but that's okay i mean i have plan b in case this didn't oxidize the way i expected it to um bb's let me grab some show you what i mean uh -huh. So, you know how they have the thing in the other bottles? You can put any sort of like a heavy bead or a BB in the bottom of them to help you with the shaking, with the stirring. Oh. Okay. And I, I like to do that in anything that I make that needs mixed. Um, of course, you don't want to put lead BBs in food, but you know. <laughs> I don't know when I've ever had to make anything like this with food, but you know. Um, so hear it. Okay, I can so hear it. and you know, I had plan B lined up in case it didn't oxidize. So we have to wait and see how that dries. It is pretty though. I do like it. That's, that's a fun color and it'll be fun to make splatters with it, I think. So what I do need to do right now is make my spray paint. So let's try to do that and see if it works. I need to put more water in here. I should have brought another funnel. We'll see. So when I use these kind of inks, and it's not as often as I should really the oxide inks these and I'm spraying them sometimes I use my other little walnut ink spray bottle to do it instead of water because it it grunges out the color a little bit more and then you still get that effect that these you guys know about these these right you know about these right any yes. of them with this gray they just turn another fun color. Come on. You know you want to. I'm guessing it is low. It's okay. We'll use this one. So let's see how this works. Julie, I've made, I've been brewing some. Um, <gasps> it works. <laughs> That's the. Uh, continuous spray well you, i had to pump it up look at that well that's fun we can make our own spray paints then i'm guessing it has something to do with that tube in there how fun is that okay that well i actually cute. have some stuff go ahead Dawn, the dawn uh power wash that you spray on like grungy pans uh -huh. you know, it's that kind of bottle and so so is mr clean really so I've got one mr clean bottle that's almost empty i didn't know you could buy them on their own 
Well, I think it's a new thing and they were advertising them like for the Amazon Prime Day. Um, yeah. Like they're new for beauty to make beauty products with or, you know, to spray your hair with water or um, I, I love the idea of getting to make my own sprays. That's fun. OK, so I've got a few with texture here. And then I've also got some that don't have texture that I made up. So let's let's do a couple of those first. Um, so I stamped on some tissue paper. And some of these were the tissue papers that, there's a Halloween one, that we um, used to get in on the gel plate in all the little spaces on the stencil. And sometimes those aren't fabulous, you know. So they'll just have a, like a little bit of paint on them, um, like that one. So this is a good way to use those. Um, to stamp on them. All right. So if I make my own, let's use that one instead of the other Halloween one. Okay. So you can make your own, you know, collage paper. And generally, um, I did make a new spray box too. Generally, when you put another medium on your tissue paper or on your paper, it actually changes it um, a little bit depending on the medium and makes it a little stronger. So hopefully that will happen here. And this is my favorite tissue, the stuff that is um, a little more wet strength. I think that is. I think the next one's rice paper actually. So the goal would be not to, I probably should have put it on paper, not to move it a whole lot because, you know, you want it to dry um, straight. You don't want to peel it up and then have, have, um, have it tear on you. Words, man, I tell you. So what I'm, this is all permanent ink. And then you see the gold there that is from the gel plate, just getting down in little crevices. And it, it wasn't one that I intended on keeping just, you know, one that you use over and over again. You guys know what I'm saying here, right? Because words are hard. <laughs> words are so hard. <laughs> so they can be hard. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes harder than others. Yes. Um, so I'll put another one on there. This is rice paper. Sometimes rice paper is really weird on the gel plate. Um, and you know, these are ugly. So what else are you gonna do with them? Take some stamps out, have a little fun with them. And then you can use them for collage and, you know, tear them off here and there. So let's try that. Oh my gosh. I just cannot believe we can make our own spray paint. It only goes so far though. I mean, it's continuous to a point. I just like the way that those bottles spray. I mean, yeah. like, you know, for somebody that has problems with their hands, you know, you, you squeeze it once and you get a lot of, thing for your buck, so to speak. You get a lot of material out in a short amount of time. Yeah. So that that is something I appreciate. Yeah, I think this has potential to be beautiful when it's done. I have some cool, you know, different stencils on here, some different things going on. And it'll dry a little bit different, you know, like any watercolor would. And walnut crystals are basically like watercolor. Um, I do believe that any of these that you get here, these kind, um, that have that little bit of pigment and they have a sepia tone like these, the Lindy's with that little bit of pigment in the bottom and the sepia tone, I'm pretty sure that's walnut crystal that they're using in there plus the pigment. And we can make some of those. That's part of the plan today. So... Sarah said the the benefit of the bottles that you're using is that they have a, a nice diffusion. A, a nice what? Diffusion. Oh, yeah. The yeah. fine mist. Yes, yes, it is a nice fine mist. Um, so then I've got Dr. these. Okay. Diane said that um, she's getting a, a, an all-natural deodorant. Uh -huh. And the spray bottles are really good to reuse for um, inks and sprays. And she oh. said it's called Dr. Miss Deodorant Spray. Huh. We'll have to let everybody know how that works. Okay, so I'm just setting these off to dry because they're going to look different. This does not give us an indication at all. They always look so different after they dry. Um, 
not, I mean, I haven't done a whole lot of those stamped, but I know that the color is different for that. So then I also have, I'm just going to keep putting paper in here because the paper in the bottom of my spray box is often my favorite. My other box was so big. Okay, so here I have some rip strips. And if you guys have been following me, you know about the rip strips. And I was really surprised Kylie May has made several videos with the rip strips now, Kylie Koo. And it's so wonderful. Um, but if you haven't made any of these, they're just with scraps. Uh, and they can be used as a tag, a pocket, a bookmark. Um, you know, they can be cut into whatever shape you want. You can make ATCs with them if they're wide enough. They're just a lot of fun. Just, you know, pockets, tucks, whatever, an edge on something um, in collages. Uh, you can do it on any sort of um, long, skinny paper. It can be cardstock, can be packaging. It could be anything. I have a box. I just throw all these scraps in. So this morning I came up here and I actually put texture paste on a few of them. And that was so that we could test out these. And we're going to make some more colors too. So we'll get some more, more things happening. So I'm going to put that off to the side and it's going to look different when it's done. And then, oh, and don't worry. I have lots of textures. <laughs> I also did these. Could be putting roll offs in this box, you know, it's okay. It won't go to waste. Not with me. This is watercolor you paper. You also use your rip strips for belly bands. Yes, yes. Any sort of tuck you can think of. Um, this is Nouveau Mousse. And it's that color right there, which is... I had to stand up. Sorry, guys. Uh, what is it called? Aquamarine. So this is like the, a, a lot of gilding waxes, but it's more of a paste uh, and it's water soluble. It works like a, a watercolor, but once it's dry, it's not a watercolor anymore. And these are dry. This is on watercolor paper. And it's fun to have that color ahead of time and do a spray. You guys know I have a texture cart and these are the kind of things that I have on my texture cart. Hi, Margola. Hey, Margalo. Glad to see you. How you doing? I bought the bigger empty one on Amazon. It was a hairdresser category. I guess they use them as well. Oh, are you talking about the spray bottles? Yeah. Yeah, they're selling them in multi-packs, you know. That's going to be beautiful when it's done, I think. You can build up color with your walnut eating, too. I mean, you can put, um, you can make it darker, you can make it lighter. Um, I just think it's going to be so nice to have this in this bottle. Um, so next let's take some of these other bottles and move this back and make one of these, shall we? Just like this. So we're going to make it with the walnut spray or the walnut ink and one of my pigments and it could be any kind of pigment really as long as you don't put so much in that it's not that it's going to clog the tube um which there is something i can do here to help with that before i get started um hey what you made a spray from Nouveau Mo you could it's water soluble um i i haven't done it but okay so i want to cut this at an angle basically to help um, with clogs. I, I feel like, you know, it, the opening is a little bit bigger that way, or maybe that's the wrong thing to do. What do you think, Lisa? Have you used the new Nouveau Mousse in water before or made it into a spray? I know you no. use them often. No, I have not. I, I, I don't know if it would work. Any kind of, you know, your gouache and your watercolors certainly would work, but um, I, I don't know. I haven't done that. I have a lot of other water soluble mediums, so it just hasn't occurred to me to do that. Okay. So this time I think what I want to do is put some of this in there and then I'm going to pick a pigment and I'll, I'll let you guys help me. 
so I have the brown mica powder. I have the brownish red, which is like a two-tone. Uh, we could try white. I'm not sure. It's not going to be like the, the stuff that didn't work there. Um, that's also a brownish red. There's a red gold. There's a bronze. We could even try one of these um, and these other colors here and kind of grunge out. Oh my gosh, they have holes in them. I can't do that. <laughs> I gotta stop doing that. This is the green. Um, this is the brick red. And these are natural. This is um, the the yellow. I wish I had the name on here. It just says yellow. The name of what the thing is. Um, let's see. I could pull out some other colors here. What are you guys thinking? Oh, there's a bronze gold. That might be pretty. I don't think I have any of those. Um, there's a blackish green. Pretty sure I have copper and regular gold. So I wouldn't need if those I took, again. Um, if I took eyeshadow, would it yes. be similar to mica? You can. You'd want to really, really crush that up and make sure you don't put so much in that it clogs your tube. Okay. I may try that. Let me grab some real quick. Yeah, right Rhonda, behind. I'm thinking that too. If you water down your um, Nouveau Mousse too much, it probably wouldn't be very bright, you know? Um. I'm not sure. Hey, yeah, Diane, you definitely could use your Perlex powders um, to, to do this. You could also use your Perlex powders to tint any of the mediums that we use, like the texture pastes, and kind of make your own here. I haven't done it, but to order, you know, but I'm, I'm sure you could do like a container of it if you sealed it well. I don't know why not. So, what are you guys thinking? Anybody got an idea here as far as, let's see, I think I have that. That's kind of a copper. There's some colors I might not have right here. The brownish red, the blackish green, the bronze gold, um, the brown, and I'm not sure if I have that color. Is that... This, no, that's gold. I do have quite a few of these. That one's copper. So these ones I would not have. You guys can pick one. Whatever. And here's another, uh, uh, it's a tea green. It's different also. So up to you guys to choose. Bronze, green, brown for autumn. Okay, yeah. Green. Use your um, green. I'll use my green. Okay, let's do that. What? Show me your shade of green there. It's like this, isn't it? Yeah, the blackish green. You guys. Okay, I'll do that. Now you don't have to use walnut crystals as your base here, or coffee, or whatever. Um, okay. You can use ink refills too. Any of those would work. So let's hope one of these is dry enough. And I'm not putting too much in this time. Well, hello, Eddie. Hi, Eddie. Did you get my message? Hi, Ellen. Are you, are you talking to Eddie? 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 Yeah, I sent Eddie a message, an important message. Oh, well, important messages. We'll see. Okay, sorry. We'll see. Only we put a pinch in there. And wherever I put that lid, I'm not sure. Somewhere. It is somewhere. Oh, it's right there. <laughs> okay, so water. It's on Messenger, Eddie. And it and it's important. <gasps> well, it's a good thing I have paper towels, huh? They're going to be pretty paper towels when I'm done. And it's my last one, of course. Did it go crazy? Yeah, I did. When we went to our conference in September, they had the cutest little 
little um, desserts, and they had these little miniature forks and spoons stuck in them. Oh, yeah, you can buy them at the party store. Well, I mean, I just oh. brought them home, but I, I'm going to use it to mix with. Oh, that's wonderful. Great idea. So we'll see what happens here. Yeah, I have another smaller spoon somewhere. I don't know. I, I had taken it to the retreat, so it's in something, I'm sure. Um, and which one of these was dry? Rhonda, he might be covered in powder, but that's okay. <laughs> Eddie? Is Eddie covered in powder? <laughs> um, Eddie did a um, an experiment, or he was experimenting with... Um, embossing powders oh uh, someone had gifted him some and he was trying I, no wasn't that uh eddie wasn't that um the uh paper artsy powders they that aren't i did watch that i've wanted those ages all right that's not going down so it's I'm not easy to learn to emboss though i know no. the first time i did it it we ended up with a mess. We had stuff everywhere. <laughs> it does go everywhere, I find. So let me see here. I'm just using a pokey tool here. A little one. Come on. Tried to put enough in, but not put so much in that it's going to clog. But we'll see. It'll probably clog because we're live. That's just how, well, how we roll around here. You know, if it doesn't clog, then you know, <laughs> it's not a live stream. <laughs> That's right. That's Don't right. you love this little spoon? Isn't it cute? The desserts were cute. to die for. I mean, the hotel <laughs> was really nice, but the food was not actually from the hotel. They, um, If you had your conference there, you had to actually um, hire somebody, hire a caterer to do your food huh. so they got to pick and choose which ones this which one they liked and the meals we had were most excellent and that's not always the case you never know what you're going to get got my bb you can use a bead lisa i need a bead well if you don't have any bbs yeah um i've got some ammo all I got to do is... <laughs> You're going to put bullets in there? <laughs> well, what do you think BBs are? Yeah, but, you know... I mean, really, bullets. what do you think BBs are? <laughs> so, Eddie said... It's what they put time... in, inside of a bullet. <laughs> oh, Diane said every time she uses glitter, her pit bull gets a face covered with it. <laughs> it does go everywhere, yes. <laughs> Yeah, Rhonda, they actually sell little teeny tiny packs of teeny tiny silverware for like parties. And uh, you can even get smaller ones than what we have here. The only thing better than a tiny spoon is a tiny umbrella. <laughs> so I'm stirring this pretty good because that pigment is actually going to end up on the bottom. But you can see how it's like a, it's like a, a disco ball in there, man. It's really cool. I think it does need a little bit more water, though. It's pretty dark. And you can see that there's still a little powder. It's pretty thick. This is like the soup pot. I'm going to keep adding and adding and adding. And suddenly I have a giant container. I think mine's going to turn out looking more teal than green, though. It's going to be in <laughs> yeah. your color range. Rhonda, uh, Rhonda said, do we need to hold our pinkies up while we're doing it? Oh, yeah. Definitely. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. We're using this tiny. tiny. <laughs> um, Julie, what's a mustard spoon? I don't think I've ever seen a mustard spoon. Okay. So, I filled that up all the way. Hopefully, it's not clogged. And, you know... They say to shake them back and forth, which I've been trying to do, but, you know, we're not always successful at that because we just want to go to town on it. So what I have here next, I'm going to, let's see, let's make 
Well, no, I want this. So I put some envelopes and some scrap paper into my embossing machine, some dry embossing. Um, I did wet embossing. I did double embossing and dry embossing today for this. So we could try different things. So I've got this. Let's get our box back out and see what we can do. Sports, Try not. sports freak me out. That's always been a weird thing to me, but I, I carry a spork with me in my purse. I know that's weird, but, you know, it's you, just an old habit. You it's carry a fork not with you? Paint. I'm sorry, what? I, I carry a, a, a spork. A sp um, <laughs> do you really? <laughs> I do. I, I have a spork in my purse at all times. <laughs> That's great. I keep one in my backpack and I keep one in my purse. So, you know, I'm not going to get somewhere and not have to be able to eat. Okay. <laughs> I have a I sport really from well the 70s. Diet, that's pretty right? cool. All right. So, and at, when this dries, that's when that green will show up. Um, we'll see. This is not a continuous spray, obviously. I couldn't find them in smaller. They only come in the, those bigger or bigger bottles than that. So that's Nouveau mousse there. Uh, wet embossed, dry embossed. Let's do one that is, I can keep this paper in here. I should have grabbed a whole bunch of book pages for this. Well, I'm definitely getting color. Yeah. Oh, you are? Yeah, can you see it? Um, Let me see if I can hold it up. I'll hold it up to the technology. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. You got a little and white it's, spot there. It's not bad with what, what's on this page already. So this is double embossed. And I like this because if you emboss a piece of paper and you spray it with something, it'll actually lose its shape. So you lose your design, but if you run an embossing pad like this over it after you emboss it, and then you know put the uh, the the regular embossing powder on top of it, then it captures that um, design so that you don't lose it when you spray it. So basically, it became a stamp, and some of the texture will still be there. This is an envelope, too. I just thought it would be fun. Don't know why. Maybe in a journal. Maybe two pockets or something. But let's give that <laughs> Diane, some. Diane said that um, when she worked at Costco, and people would come around for their samples, that they would be offended. You know, they would want to keep their forks. I, I, I oh, don't I'm sure. generally keep forks or spoons, but these were just so darn cute. And I thought... You know, sometime I might do a collage or, you know, a frame something and I could actually incorporate them. So I thought, oh, OK, I'll take us. I bought one of each, um, even though I had several desserts, as my blood sugar can tell you. <laughs> it's not very good. So. I'm going to put this here because we already have goobers on it. And then I'm going to pull out. So that worked, actually. And we will see more of the green after it um, dries, I think. Uh, but it's, you know, it's Let's not a, this one. it's more grungy. It's more in my kind of tone. So I really like it with the walnut powder. But after this sits for a little while, that pigment will settle at the bottom, just like those other ones. Let me get out a wet emboss here. I should have mixed up more. Well, how much did you mix up? Let's see. Just, uh, I didn't know how much to mix up. <laughs> Just a little. Oh, I yeah. Mixed up more. I mean, I figured if I was trying it, I didn't want to tear all my stuff up. It's not like you I have a shortage of eyeshadows here. They, they just kind of uh, migrate over here. <laughs> I've never used as the eyeshadow for a spray. I think that's a great idea. As go through the different phases, you know, they they want different colors and yes. different manufacturers. And so things can get quite interesting. So if there's texture on there and you spray it, the um, 
glitter or the pigment ends up getting trapped in the little spaces and that's where more of the green is showing you see that there's more in the little creases because that's where the glitter is falling it's heavier and that's kind of fun and then i could that's very pretty well that's rhonda's stencil there and I don't know what these will be used for. I just got them for, you know, did these for today. Um, I, I have a cart and I have textures in different sizes standing up on the top shelf. Um, and it's pretty full <laughs> of things like this. But that's what I go dig through when I'm doing a project. I mean, they can be used for anything. Oh, thanks, Rhonda. I'm just going to go ahead and take out the rest of this green and I'm going to add some of this blue that's beside it. It's not like there's not um, a whole lot more. That's a pretty piece of paper you're on right there. What's up? What's um, going on there? I want to show it to Julie. Julie, this is the paper that I did yesterday using um, basically Darcy's technique. Um, I started out, you know, I used um, gesso. I put some white in it and then I took yellow and then I come back with the teal and then I used some of that dragonfly um what color is it, Eddie the green what's the name of the green that's what I put on it next but I thought if I mix this green and this blue together I think it'll look nice on this it looks great and I'll have maybe a bottle full of spray usable spray minus the Oh. I actually think this needs a little bit more of the walnut in it. It like because the base yeah, color isn't as dark as I'd like it. So I'm gonna set this off to the side to dry. Oh, I guess I could gather these up. I do have lots of paper here, so and lots of texture. So what color should we do next? Let's see. I, I um, am I'm going to mix this blue in with the, that that green and see if I can get kind of a turquoisey color. I want to see if I can do um, some of the, uh, oh my gosh, the graphite powder. I want to see yes. what it does. This is made for locksmiths. They would put this little end in a lock to lubricate Hi, it. Man. Hey, Lynn. So I kind of want to see what happens with this, if this settles to the bottom, because it should be heavier. And if it gets like, you know, the graphite paint, I, I want to see if it has that sort of effect. And I think it would be nice, um, but we'll see. I'm going to try it in a little container first, just to see how it dissolves. And then I have a dropper okay. in the end if I want to. So I should probably go ahead and use this one. I put it in this so that I could use a brush with it. So I'm gonna put that in first so I can see how much. And it's really fine. <gasps> that is way too much. It comes out so fast. I'm gonna put some in here. This is one of my husband's um, uh, drone part boxes. They come in these cool boxes. So I have stacks and stacks of them. Okay. So this was like three bucks, this thing of graphite and it's not artist grade. It's, you know, for locksmiths, but it's very fine anyway. And it could be exactly the same as the artist grade because it's meant for lubrication, for like a dry lubrication. So let's get water. I think that's this one. No, it's this one. Oh, that's got green. I gotta wipe it out. So, um, Eddie, who gifted you all that awesome uh, Delusions um, powder? I think it was Colleen. Really? Um, I was wondering if it was the company. <laughs> I was thinking, boy, I need to write to them. 
trying to clean this out. What am I thinking? I could just do it like this. I'm just going to pour a little water into it. <laughs> if, I don't think she'll go boom on air. What? <laughs> <laughs> Rhonda said one of these days you're going to go boom, mixing, mixing stuff. Oh, like yeah. Mix the wrong two <laughs> things together. You never know. I, I would be more likely to do that than she would. So I, I don't know why my... I thought of that's kind of funny. <laughs> well, well, she was just hurting, sir. I, I, I don't know what happened. We got it on tape. <laughs> <laughs> I was experimenting. <laughs> okay, so I've got quite a bit of water in there. Oh, it looks cool on the sides because it's kind of well, dry in some spots. Um, cool. I, I don't know what it's going to look like once I um, mix it with the water, but um, oh, it looks really doing? nice on my hand. Well, that's good. I have good color. Pick up an embossing, buddy. It makes a lot of difference to the quality of the embossing. What does that mean? And what's an embossing, buddy? I don't know what that is. <laughs> Belinda, did I say hello to you? I did earlier, right? I think you did. Okay. I'm so sorry. I'm all focused on my experiments so I don't blow up here. <laughs> you know. Uh, Delusion, Dilutions Ink Sprays. I have recently discovered, uh, I love this color. I've ordered it three times because um, twice was on accident. Uh, no, once was on accident because I was like, oh, I don't have that color. And, you know, but I've gone through a whole bottle and I've only had it for like four or five months. Um, there's no sparkle in it, which is something that I always look for. And I absolutely love it. This is the Balmy Night. You guys have seen me use it. The Embossing Buddy, the packet of powder that prevents... Oh, oh, like one of these. I like Messy, so I barely reach for this. But this has cornstarch in it. Um, and it's something you put on ahead of time. Yeah. Okay. So let's see if it worked. I can see where the BB's been. It's making lines in there. That's interesting. Okay. We're going to shake, rattle, and roll, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I'm going to get something I don't really... Let's do it on this. On this side here, just to see how it looks. I mean, you get quite a bit of it for three bucks, too. And it could end up just looking like a pencil, you know, who knows? Let's see how it dries. Wow. A 10 year old in Boston, buddy. Well, isn't it like, it's like a bag that has the powder in it, correct? Yes. Yeah. I think it's similar to what a uh, gymnastic use. Um, oh, to, yeah. You know, you take like the to sweat their off hands. hands before they perform. Yeah. Cornstarch, corn flour, yeah. Yeah, just cornstarch or baby baby powder would work as well. And that's kind of what this is. Somebody gifted me this a long time ago. Um, it's from OK Tool, no, EK Tools. And it's just got a little brush on the end. And you just you can refill it with, you know, any of the powders. Eddie, I would think that you could. Um, I'm gonna let I think this dry. You could probably just take like um you know those uh, little bags that like golden nugget gum comes in? Little drawstring bag? That would probably make one. It you would have to be something that gum. is thick enough to keep the powder in until you, until you do that. Uh, give it some pressure because you don't want it to or, or just leak out over time, I would think. I don't know. I want to make a rust now, like um, this color, <clears throat> this orange sort of color. And this is the brick red, which is like, 
you know, terracotta. And I want to make, because I'm almost out of my rust, distress rust spray. I can't wait okay, how quickly this, I go through this these. This out pretty good mixed in it, but it's, the green's pretty much gone away, but you can see it on my paper pretty good. It's a nice Your contrast. Your paper's beautiful, by the way. That's a beautiful I paper. I think it's done. I'm thinking it's done. Yeah, get a different paper route. That's that's gorgeous. Okay, so I got to find something to put this in now. I have a couple other. Oh, let's put it in this because I don't want to. This is the nearly gone. Just a couple today. drops. Should I put it in that? And it has, um, on this one, I have been, I had some bolts in a jar and I put vinegar and water in with it and it's been sitting there for a week. And so this is the, the grunge spray from that. Can you, you can't really see it well, can you? I can That's actually. Can. It looks like coffee dye. No, actually I just, this was like a newsletter that my husband gets. It's an huh. automotive newsletter, and I just put a base coat on it, and then I, I use them for, for pages sometimes, but this is the rust. This is my rust I made, my rusty water. So it did turn out pretty good. Is that dry? It is dry. Huh. Yes. And that, that's my rust water. Um, and this is... This is the one I did today with the coffee. It's not quite dry yet, but it's getting, the, as it's drying, it's looking more of a bronze. Yeah, it is. It's beautiful. So it's, um, I mean, it's a big contrast between the two. So I'd say that experiment worked. Yeah. Huh. Um, Lynn it. suggests using a sock for that. I think a sock would work too. You might even double double some socks up. Just, just get yourself case. like an athletic sock. You know, one that'll give you plenty of room to get a good knot in it. The weave is going to make a difference though on the sock. Because some of them are more loosely weaved and some of them are thicker, like a, a more expensive sock. So I'm putting it right into my rust bottle here. It's the rusty hinge. I'm just assuming okay. this is going to work because this is, it won't spray anymore. It just had a couple drops left in it and it's basically gone. So <clears throat> I want enough in here that it has a lot of color. And then I should actually make a yellow as well because then I'll have all three shades in the rust palette. That'd be good. Well, as often as I use them, yeah. <laughs> well, you always right. play with yours. I don't always yeah. run out. I constantly <laughs> play with mine. But I'm going to have a new color. Okay, we'll see if this works. This pigment is supposed to work in soap, so it, very, it should work in water like this. I mean, it's supposed to color things. I better have a BB because these ones don't have them. Ah, uh, weave, 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 weave. Can you see it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. So, are the edges, um, the uh, where it's pooled in the edges, is that the eyeshadow? I'm curious. As yeah, that's like awesome. Concentrated on that, yeah. Yeah, it's, right. it looks like it's um, absorbing it a, a little bit, but it's, um, it, it, it is spreading some too. Hmm. Well, it should absorb a little. Hi, Barbara. How are you? Eddie said Hi, he's a little deep. <laughs> I'm going to use a brush this time because I, I don't want to spray it until I get the mixture right. So I'm just going to use like a cheapy brush here. Let's see. And something absorbent, hopefully. Let's go back to this that I have this drawing on. 
the uh, graphite. So let's see how this. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? It's a great color. That is a pretty color. Yeah. So I only filled it about half full. Um, we'll see if it sprays. If it's got too much powder in it, it's harder to get it to spray. That is beautiful. Dry and gorgeous. You guys, if you have gouache, you could totally use that in a spray bottle with some water. Um, because it's an opaque uh, watercolor. And you'd get more saturation with the color, too. Okay. So now I'm going to take this and put it in my spray box. Let's wipe that off. All right. And I should just cover that little corner right there because we want to see how that's going to dry. Get a little scrap piece. I'm going to do this. Just going to clean this palette all the way out. Okay. Where'd my spray bottle go? And let's see how it does. Oh, it is a great color. Thanks, Eddie. Okay, let's see. Ooh. Look at that. It has sort of an opaqueness to it. I could put more water in it. I was afraid it was going to be too, um, too thin, but there's actually quite a bit of color there. So it could stand some more water. Now the test will be if they clog really like after they dry, are you going to watch the replay next? This has been, I mean, we're just experimenting and making our own sprays. <laughs> it's fun. And we're using different items to do it like between the two of us. So. All right, so I'm going to let that dry. Oh, boy, that's a great color. I think we need to spray that on something else because that was a book page, and that is a very absorbent book page. So let's see if this will color. This is a roll-off, and all I did this morning was take some of the golden modeling paste, but any of your texture paste should work. We're going to see if it's absorbent, if this goes onto the white that's there, or if it's just going to go around the edges, because it depends on your paste, um, whether or not it's going to take color. And if it doesn't take a spray color, then you can go in with wax, like a gilding wax, or um, just paint on your finger. Um, it's a great time to finger paint. <laughs> Take out Rhonda, that. it is eyeshadow and I'm adding water. That's all I'm doing. I'm crushing it straight from the palette on the the thought that okay, if she can do mica and get sprayed, then I can do eyeshadow and get sprayed. So I have plenty of eyeshadow because I have two girls and when they don't want anything anymore, um, they pass it off to me and if it's when I found out that I could use them upstairs, I just started bringing everything up here. You started stealing I don't really your makeup, put huh? eyeshadow on anymore. <laughs> I really don't. That's funny. You just started stealing their makeup. This is actually a, a green piece of paper that I did this on. It's a car, it's a cardstock. So let's see how much saturation we get. It's a stencil with uh, Nouveau Mousse, and then it had Nouveau Mousse on it that I went to wipe off, and it ended up smearing, so I, I ended up doing that on purpose. It does have a lot of color. Don't forget yeah, to wipe Julie, their nose, too. You have too. to be careful with what you mix, because I, I, I tried some things, and I stopped up all my bottle. You know, some of my bottles got stopped up, and they've never yeah. been the right since. But well, yeah, having the that's one of the in benefits there? of... Uh, putting a bead or a BB in there is going to mix it better. Yes, so will, you don't I'll have get chunks at the bottom. Pan. Yeah. So we're going to put that off to the side. And then I I'll turn that some, you, you can see what's in the middle of it. I did some of these earlier. Um, and these are two of the stamps that I carved at the gel printing retreat that we had. 
Um, and I love the goddess. Oh, I love her so much. Um, so I just went ahead and, you know, stamped the labels with permanent ink. And I'll do a couple colors here of this. Sharon, Lynn yes. is saying that when you're doing your sprays, when you get to the end, turn your bottle upside down and give it one last spray. Like a spray you paint can? Your nozzle. So you're less likely to have, um, you know. I didn't know that worked with these. I up. thought just spray paint. I thought that's what you did with spray paint. As, as, you yeah. Know, like well, my husband I, I mean, she's saying me. that. You know, huh. it's, it's worth worth a try. Yeah, it's totally worth a try. And I always wipe their nose. Always. I don't know why this one is being weird. It's just walnut spray. It's the one that I have always have above my desk. Fine. I was trying to get some splotches going on here. And this is that continuous bottle. Boy, that's... This is a game changer right here, you guys. For me, as a person that always reaches for the spray paint, for different projects, this is a game changer. I cannot believe that we can get this in a in a in a spray bottle like this, and not an aerosol that has pressure. Which I know, I good. know that's true. Yeah, look at how much color is there. It's it is very much like paint, and that's just made for soap. I do want to spread this out because she doesn't necessarily need to have a big blob right there. Let's let's give her this on her shadow. And yes. This well, is just I made a an orange brush. Huh? I said I've made orange. Let's see. Can Show see us it? your orange. Oh, Barbara, yes. Experimenting is the best, isn't it? And it's also wonderful to make our own products. I, I, you're more connected to it that way. That's awesome. Was it, was it clear to begin with? Was the paper, uh, clean to begin with? Is all that color from your spray bottle? No, no. Okay. Um, it's got some of the rust on it that I played with yesterday and I oh. used some white gesso, but do okay. you see my mushroom in the middle? Um, you got a light uh, glare, so tip it uh, towards you. Oh, okay. There we that go. Makes sense. There we go. Yeah. I don't see a mushroom, but I see circles. It looks like a party hat upside down. <laughs> All right. <laughs> We'll let it dry. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to let this dry and we'll see how much lighter the color is. And maybe it won't be because it's that stuff that's meant for soap. Um, but I imagine it's the same kind of pigment that they would use in paint, too. Because they're natural yeah, pigment. I, I that's agree. where it comes from. Yeah. So I'm going to let that dry. Let me see if any of the other things are dry that we started with. Oh, my goodness. This green spray. No, they're still a little wet, but look what the green did here. Diane, I made my own rusting powder, <laughs> rusting. And I this had a lot of fun, you know, making some grungy papers with it, too. I was, I had a little bit of time between activities and I had finished my housework. So I thought, okay, I'm going upstairs to play for a little bit. So I played in the rusty water. Sounds real healthy, doesn't it? Well, I saved my rusty water when I did rust dyeing. I've got a gallon uh, or a three gallon jug downstairs full of it. Um, because I, it was so dark, I thought for sure I could use it again, you know, for pet fabrics. I bet you can. Well, yeah, it's got a lot of rust in it. You know, it was the one where I used the vinegar and did, I made a few videos. I wrapped stuff up with fabric and use yeah the, add the muslin yeah. like the muslin yeah yeah i remember it's that that liquid right there okay so i gotta see what color i want to do next here let me put this away so the other thing i was thinking oh i love this it's not clear though i you know it's very opaque so 
have to keep that in mind. The other thing I was thinking was um, when you make, I don't know if you guys have ever made any sprays with um, like ink refills. I did this a long time ago before I had very many sprays at all. And I do use my sprays all the time. I run out of certain colors because I love them. Um, but I was thinking it would be a great way to tone down. Like this is a, this is a bright red because it was a red refill ink. Um, it's almost, almost raspberry. Almost. It's called, uh, pomegranate, I think. Um, and it was, uh, stamping up. I got these in a craft lot used like, and there were a whole bunch of them in there. Um, so it just has water in it and this stuff. Uh, and I'm going to spread it out a little bit because it's almost pink and I, I don't really want that. I want to grunge it up. So I'm going to actually add some uh, of the walnut crystals and more water and give it kind of a, a browner undertone because, you know, grungy. Because, <laughs> you know, grungy. <laughs> Sarah, Sarah said she got a really good result um, using your rusting method. Oh, I'm so glad. Um, it was fun. I, I love that fabric and I've been hoarding it because I like it so much. And so that means that I need to make more so I can use it. You know, <laughs> I've used the rings you've seen me use on book covers, which is fun. I don't have my light on. Darn it, guys. I'm sorry. Is that better? So I put, you know, a tiny bit in there. And then I'm going, I'm going to just fill it up. So it'll, it'll be a brown with a red undertone. Okay. When I'm done with it. Or at least something like that. And now because it has a powder in it, the other way was just a liquid because it was the drops. But now I've added a powder, so I'm adding a BB. <clears throat> Gonna have to fill that back up. All right. Oh, I need coffee. Oh, the fabric twisted around the can was the best. That sounds cool. Did the can have lines? Because, you know, some of the tin cans have lines. I think that that would be awesome. Were they um, soda cans or uh, like vegetable cans? I don't think you can Did use they soda have cans. Regions? Those are aluminum. They won't rust. Or they're not supposed to rust, at least. All right. This time, I think... Let's use that and <laughs> Sharon. Yes. Rhonda said you're like Mary Poppins with your bag of tricks. <laughs> oh, I always worry I'm gonna bore you guys. <laughs> My bag of tricks. <laughs> oh well that that's you know, heartwarming because I do worry that I'm gonna bore you guys sometimes because it's exciting for me. I'm experimenting. It's a blast, you know, <laughs> but this, I, I hope it encourages everyone to go experiment and play and don't be afraid to mix things. You're not going to have an explosion. Do not use, however, ever do not use um, alcohol ink because you, you're not supposed to put alcohol ink in a spray bottle because it has a bit of resin in it. And that resin, you would breathe because it would become microscopic particles and you don't need resin in your lungs. It, it's very bad for you. So, it's off to the side. Okay. All right. The can had lines. So, it was a, like a vegetable fabric. fan? Yes. And soaked it outside for about two weeks oh. in a box. Didn't you post pictures? You, I think I commented on some pictures. I think. Ooh. 
that has a nice red undertone, but it's different than this color. It's more bricky. So let's spray it and find out. This is Yolanda just a, said she definitely agrees with you about the resin, not, not using the alcohol. Yeah, you're not supposed to. Sprayer. That's why they don't make it in spray bottles. Um, you can use any kind of refill for your stamp. Oh, it's still kind of pink. Oh, that was what was in the nozzle. Um, any kind of uh, uh, ink that you is that is not permanent, I would say. Uh, any of the water soluble inks for cards or whatever. So it had still had some of that red inside the um, spray or inside the tube. And that's why it came out that color first. I think it could use some more brown though. It's still a tiny bit on the rose sort of side to me. I don't hate it. Yeah, it's, it's still pinkish. Yeah, I don't hate that though. So more brown. Just like uh, more bug, more bug wings, Lexi. <laughs> Hi, Wendy. <laughs> Glad you made it. More bug wings, please. Lexi was teasing me. She said she's never heard an artist say that they'd like to see more bug parts in their in their work. And I was suggesting that because I want to hook up with one of the local beekeepers so I can buy unfiltered beeswax because it has all those, you know, little iridescent pieces from their wings and stuff and the, legs. And <laughs> well, I wouldn't have thought about that, but yeah. <laughs> so if, if I need to go buy, find some bees knees, um, I'll have to work on that. S some I bees knees? The other day. Yeah, Did bees you? knees. I was making a joke. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it was a bad one. Okay. I know. It was great. <laughs> when yes, I, when Eddie, I fry I, bacon, I like pan fried bacon, sometimes <laughs> I'll do it when it's a nice day and I can take the, my frying pan outside because we used to have a downdraft stove and you know, now we have to rely on the microwave because we could not replace what was there. And, you know, we do not have a vent that gets to the outside of the house. Hi, so Ellen. I was out there fried bacon. I fried two pounds of bacon the other day. And um, the bees started coming and trying Hi. to get my bacon. And I turned around to, to mess with my, my plants out there while the bacon was cooking and I looked down there was bee in there I said well I apologize in advance but somebody's gonna be eating some bees knees <laughs> I, I, was I, said, so no, really. I didn't know eat bees would do that I knew wasps would eat me well, it was weird it was yeah. weird they were swarming they were swarming the bacon huh and Did it was all natural bees? too there was no additives to it so it was weird interesting I'm going to set these other ones off to dry because I will build more color up on there so that they're not pink. Um, but that's almost like that rose color. I don't hate that. It almost looks like it's oxidized, which is weird. I don't know why. I'm not sure. I added some of the, the teal color spray and I put some of the orange on this. This was some of my junk papers I worked on yesterday. Some of my crappy stuff. Oh. Using the Darcy method. <laughs> so I do have a couple more of these. I have that one. And Hi, Alan. so this is one of the That's ones that is double embossed. I'm going to try here. So it's got embossing powder. It's the clear Tim Holtz embossing glaze um, that I uh, put on uh, the embossed, like dry embossed. So here we go. Julie likes the dusty pink. Do you? I'm not, you know, I'm not a pink person, guys. I, I mean, you, you all know that about me. Um, I don't hate like raspberry pink. It's not something I would reach for very often. Um, dusty pink is kind of okay. Kind of the Victorian velvet sort of that color is kind of okay, but it's not a color I would reach for. Believe it or not, my house used to be, um, when my kids were little, 
it was all that dusty pink and dusty blue and dusty green and baby angels on the walls and you know my whole <laughs> my whole living room was like that i can't believe i ever had a pink living room uh, like victorian you know sort of colors kind of grungy we found we were look you know we've been looking at houses and we found one that that really had everything that we needed in the position and place that we needed it but it was disgusting as far as the colors it was painted all these god awful eh. colors you know Lynn said I mean, it's like before we even moved in we would have had to have painted every room in the house you know even the trim was painted weird colors and i said no no we're not doing that this whole house was pink like work. before the landlord rented it to us they they sprayed yeah. everything white yeah um okay so lynn yeah i was trying you. to uh did you read it uh working Sharon in the studio working late in one night when my eyes late one night when her eyes beheld an eerie sight the art piece she had been rusting suddenly began to arise and much to her surprise, it did the mash, the rust bucket mash. <laughs> it was I a graveyard it. smash. That is awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Lynn. <laughs> Hi, Susan. That's my theme song, I think. Hi, Susan. <laughs> it says, and Ellen, I don't know if you heard me say hello. <laughs> So I'll say it again. Oh yeah, the blending solution and probably the one that extends the color probably have resin in them too, as far as that goes. So I wouldn't, I just would not put any alcohol ink products into a spray bottle at all. Um, hand pink waving, team pink. <laughs> Are you Rhonda? I didn't know. <laughs> Shaking my head Julie, over here for uh, pink haters. <laughs> my my degree is in early childhood development, so I I was very good at reading stories. Yes, I, I can read. <laughs> um, what's Lisa's channel name? Oh, she doesn't have a channel. Hello, Susan. Um, uh, Lisa <laughs> helps me on here. Um, she is my mod. <laughs> no i don't have a channel lord i'd be so out of, all over the place it would be sad i do I like would be red better than one pink. day and taking me out in the woods the next <laughs> i'm surprised that i don't and actually uh, my uh, walking stick has a gopro um holder strapped to it now and we have taken her out to the forest but it was right before we had that little house fire and we lost all the com the cords to the computer because that's where it started, um, right. where we do the editing. So it's a matter of whether or not we're going to put the programs on the other computers because he paid for that editing set, you know, that and um, I don't know if he can transfer it to another computer. I'm not sure. Um, mm -hmm. It's for his drone. Was for his drone videos. So yeah, well, I have a pretty I color going. Here. Thing I, have, I didn't realize that that was part of the fire situation. Yeah, it was the it was his computer, his editing computer. Look at this color going on right here. This was what was standing here. Like, look at that. It looks like rust. That's wonderful. Okay, I'm gonna let this dry. It's obviously gonna need color built up on there. This one looks okay. Um, they were cream to begin with. I'm going to let that dry. And I want to make a yellow. So then in the end, what I'll have is the orange, the red, the yellow, and the brown. So. Okay. Barbara wants to know how you became such an experimenter. How, well, how you found the courage to experiment what i started. think when my kids were little i raised five kids and when the, and i've always been into art i actually had my first art uh uh scholarship when i was thir when i was uh 13 
um, and that's another story for another day. Uh, but my kids actually, you know, to keep them busy, I had three step sons and two of my own. We actually did uh, projects like weekly. And it started actually with like gr Christmas gifts for grandma and mostly because I had to run my house like a preschool or I would have gone crazy. I was only 18. I had five kids to raise. So it was, you know, story time, um, art time, movie, movie time, nap time. It, it was all scheduled out. And I don't, I look back now and don't know how I did that. I have no idea how I did that at 18. I couldn't do it now. And I was 18, but I had more energy. Um, so we were not wealthy. We were poor and we would, um, uh, as often as possible, I was recycling to make projects for them to make gifts for grandma and, you know, making our own supplies. And I think that is probably where that came from, not having a lot of money and wanting to create things and keep the kids busy. Um, and I'm, I'm good at coming up with a hundred different projects for kids. That's, you know, something I really enjoy. Um, but, I, you know, a preference would be my own projects, obviously. <laughs> That's, that's how that happened. Oh, thanks. No, I'm not, I'm definitely not superwoman. Definitely not. I, I really, I was, gonna, I was happy to see that. <laughs> yeah. Not superwoman, not superwoman. Um, I'm just putting some of this on here because why not? It's like here in a puddle on my desk. Um, I used to think I was superwoman, but you know, time changed that for me. Yeah. Yeah, me yeah, too. It just, right yeah. Now. What's that? Can I make Kool-Aid, use Kool-Aid to make spray? You probably could. However, I think Kool-Aid probably will get sticky. And, and I mean the stuff without the sugar in it, obviously. I think there's something in there that's sticky. And I only remember that from hair dyeing. Okay, so there's something sticky in it. Yeah, there is. Um, it's got sure absorbic what. acid. That's probably it. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's got citric acid and absorbent. We had Sorry. more hoot spot at 18. Yeah, we did. Okay. I, I missed yeah, it probably here. would not work. You taught your kids how to sew when they were little, Diane. That's cool. Oh, oh, that's cute. Yeah, I, I think a lot of artists really like to experiment, though. I, I think that it's exciting and it's fun to try new things. And I love, you know, rolling up my sleeves and getting my hands messy. So experimenting is, you know, pretty fun for me, at least. Some people maybe that are more linear, they like even numbers. They are more mathematical about things, more into, say, uh, fine line drawing, um, uh, more realistic photos, maybe a tattoo artist or anybody that does that sort of mathematical um, art. And I don't mean they're doing math. I just mean it's precise. Probably don't like to experiment because it's not in the, <sighs> it's too messy, you know, uh, that's what I would guess. Um, now there are people that ride the line there between emotional and mathematical artists. Um, but I am definitely, I only use the other side of my brain, but the art side of my brain and you know, that, that person wants to experiment and make a mess. So <laughs> she does, she loves making messes. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? I almost have dry paper over here. We'll see. So I, now I'm going to do this. So I'm, let me ask everybody on here. Do you like even numbers or odd numbers? When you do something, do you try to go down the middle or do you try to go asymmetrically? Um, because that says a lot about the type of art that you probably produce and like. I like even numbers and 
I like things to be more random than planned. So you are down the middle. If you like even numbers, but you like random things, that is more unusual. You know, that is um, unusual for an artist that you ride the line because that means you're using your both sides of your brain evenly, basically, um, to like because the even numbers go with the person that wants to have the straight linear sort of um, get up close and personal, but it has to be perfect art that they plan ahead for. Yeah, um, odd and asymmetric. That is more likely the kind of art that we all do in mixed media here and junk journals. And um, there are people that make uh, the journals that have like the back black background and everything is like layered and all their lines are even and they probably don't have a lot of torn edges. That's the other side of that. But uh, um, so you think you're both, Ellen? Yeah, I, I'm an asymmetrical person. I can find balance in the odd numbers. And there is a way to do that if you have that asymmetrical brain. Asymmetrical says, odd numbers. Fly by the seat of your yeah. pants. That's me right there. Yeah. <laughs> Rhonda's more asymmetrical. I'm, I'm guessing most of us are more asymmetrical here. Um. Oh, or, or you're both. Yeah. Popular. Um, I, I'm a fly by the seat of my pants person. Barbara said, uh, Diane, I've never heard what, oh, crumble quilting is taking tiny pieces of scraps and bringing them together to produce fabric. Is, is it like everything is exactly the same size or like quilting where everything is a certain shape or is it like Franken? paper quilting I think, i'm guessing I'm it's like franken franken fabrics yeah well that that would be an asymmetrical way to quilt yeah um okay so let's see what was i doing here i was gonna try to make yellow but i do want to yes diane said it was all different shapes and sizes so basically your bits and pieces that you have at the end yeah you know, so it's like you super your pattern out or whatever you just sit down and start sewing them until you can make like a full piece of fabric with it you know joined and and repurposed i've always wanted to do the 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 pictures um in quilting where you use all those super scraps and you do like a landscape or you do, I've always thought that looked fascinating, yeah. but obviously you I wouldn't do a landscape. Do What's that? I said, you probably could do it um, because you can actually, you know, if you can visualize your design, you can take just a piece of paper and sew it onto that. You well, know, and I probably would do it very abstractly. That would generally be, I mean, because that's how I do things. So it would be, I would just start and keep going. That's how I design stencils, you guys. I don't, there's not like a lot of sit down and draw it out. And um, I've just sat with a tool and some Yupo and started carving like a sculpture. Um, because that's how my brain likes to process things and, and it works, <laughs> you know? I, I mean, sometimes I have a rough plan and that goes with every single one of my projects. I'll have a rough plan, but I really don't know what it's going to look like when I get to the end because I follow my passion each step of the way. And I, and I said, well, this works and this doesn't work. So I'm going to go over here or, Ooh, that would be cool. I'll think about that later. You know, um, Wendy says she likes the process rather than the finished product. I find mixing yes. paint so relaxing. But I think we all like the process as gel printers. If all of us do that, definitely there's there's some of that in there. Um, because it's like we can make 300 gel prints and then I always feel like I have to do something with them in the end. Uh, memory quilts for kids using fabric. Oh, that's wonderful. What did I miss from Susan earlier? Everybody thinks Susan's funny and I missed it. 
Uh, even the Susan said it's odd for me. Even the TV volume has to be on an odd number. <laughs> <laughs> I think I would probably do that if I was looking at numbers. I, I think I would because I can't help myself. Um, definitely, I'm an odd number. But my favorite number is an even number because it's associated with something in my life. Um, you know, it, it reminds me of a, mo of a happy moment in my childhood. So it has nothing to do with why, you know, why I like odd numbers. But yeah I, my, I think yeah my jersey number was always an even, i always had an even number i generally was number 12. but um one season you know that that didn't happen in one of the sports so you know but all three sports i played i had the number 12. so that kind of got me to where i always liked even numbers better than odd i need more water here yeah, I don't think your favorite number has any, any, you know, because usually it's there's a reference point for it, so it doesn't have anything to do with whether you like even or odd numbers generally. Okay, so it, now I want to do a yellow. One make something once, and then he can make it himself. Say that one more time. Eddie, Eddie's a sounds like he's a visual learner. Uh -huh, uh, I am. Yeah. My assumption. He said, I can watch something, someone make something once and I can make it myself. Eddie, Eddie, I'm like that. I mean, I can Me watch something and, and follow, you know, not even follow along or take notes and I can reproduce, you know, don't, don't make me uh, have to follow directions. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm a visual learner exactly too. What I do well. Let's see if that's enough. And then, of course, I'm going to add walnut crystals oh, to make Wendy, it. You've never made a journal. What's that? I'm trying to encourage Sharon to make us make a journal. I, I oh, think I, that should I be one of our make journals. I just I always projects. take so long. I, I always take forever to do a journal. I, and my next one, I really want to be, I, I've, I've started gathering things for a circus journal. I want to make it in the shape of a uh, tent, the circus tent, do kind of a freak show sort of thing. Yeah. I know you would do that, but what about the dolls, the, the images that you've got? What if we all made oh. a journal with that with as the our kit? thing? With the kit. With the kit. With that is kids. such a great idea. How do you guys feel about that? Um, making a, even if it's just one signature. Um, and if I haven't sent it, you the kit it yet, I can send it. should be just one signature it. so that it's not overwhelming. Yeah. I mean, if you want to do more, do more. But anybody that doesn't have the kit yet, I'll send it. How do you guys feel about that? It's a digital kit that I had a friend create just for us uh, here on Texture Junkies. It's not exactly just dolls. It's like it will. I have it, it right it's here. It's got a little bit of a Victorian look to it. No, not really. It's more um, classical art. It is William Waterhouse and classical statues. Here, I'm going to grab it. I have some of them cut out here. So let's see. It has. There are some angels that could be used in the holidays. And that's kind of something that could be used on a cover. There's some stained glass windows. Basically, I my friend Cheryl, who has an Etsy shop, um, she created this kit just for texture junkies, and it's absolutely free. And it was to to celebrate my uh, 700 subscribers. It, but she also created a coupon code for us, and you guys get 30% off if you go to her shop. And everything in her shop is like two dollars anyway. Um, so she's really, really affordable. I love these. And I like the idea of these classical figures, which I use all the time on really abstract things. I actually have some tags here that I started. Um, where are they? You know, we need to, I feel like I need to check on Trish and Evie because they're not here. See, there's one that, and I love her. 
So very abstract background and then a classical figure, you know, which is perfection. And I love those two things together. It's that that thing of opposites that I like. I don't know why I can't talk today. What is my problem? I love these ones. Can you imagine giving these a different head? Um, and it's a large kit. You could pick and choose which one you wanted to, you know, which ones you want to print out. I think these are some of my favorites. The William Waterhouse. She took out the backgrounds. And there they are. And this kit cannot be sold. Um, some of these images are uh, for personal use only. I mean, clearly the statues and stuff are fine. Stained glass windows. But I think some of these ones were not on the public domain. But they're fine for, I mean, if for a one-off. So that is, let me see. Oh, this one's great. There are more, but that was just what I grabbed. It's a huge kit. So if you guys are interested, you love statues too, Barbara. I, I just love mixing those opposites together. You think you got it already? Lexi, I'll send you one too. Oh, good, Rhonda. If there's anybody that has not received it, um, just reach out to Sharon and she will send that to you. Yes. That way um, yes. we can start maybe working on a project. And for those of you that are not interested in doing a journal, just you know, do some you can tags. Still take those. Um, Wendy, you can do tags. Um, you know, you can cover box, you know, add it to your box covers that you're making. So, um, you know, just know that oh, there's yeah. different ways that they can be used. They're not limited to making a journal with it. Yeah, you could do a box. So I think, I think that know, would like, be a fun project yeah. for us to work on together and kind of go through the through some different stages with it. That would be really fun, I think. Um, we should do that. Yeah, that's a great idea, Lisa. Thank you. Um, Diane, I just need your email. So anybody that doesn't have it, um, email me so I have your email and then I'll pop it along. And let me give you my email. Oh, I had it written down right here, but do you have it in the bottom of the you have it in the bottom of the the stream? Oh what? You have your email address in there. Um I could yeah, I can add it. It's not on there right now. When you I'll do the drop it. down box, do you put it yes. there? Yes, I'll put it there. That's a good idea. So I decided I wanted more yellow in here. Okay. It's a little too brown. That's that's what I was asking. Yeah. Um Lexi, maybe first follow someone. Yeah. Um, how about, let me read some of these comments about this. I think it's because we have so much paper and stuff. Yes. We, that's a great, I mean, let's, and it's not really a journal as much as it's an art book, you guys. Um, I, I think it would be a lot of fun and we could add other things. Obviously it wouldn't just be those, but we could use gel prints or whatever you have on hand, whatever. Um, Eddie said, I have some digital photos of museum statues, laser printed to do image transfers. You could add some of those in there. That would be amazing. That would just, you know, just use whatever. Lexi said, that doesn't help. Susan, too many choices. Yet somehow none of them match. Lexi, we can walk you through a journal. We could, we'll, we could start with the very beginning together. Oh, Le um, Lexi, don't worry. We, we can help you with a journal. Barbara, I think. I th What does Barbara think? Um, I think I got those images. Barbara oh, you think likes, you got the images. She okay. loves statues too. Yes, I, I think that's awesome. Um, yeah, it would be a lot of fun to do that together. And maybe we could even include my Wild of Enden jar. Um, that's right here. Where like one day after we get it already set up, we go, oh, I'm so sorry, you guys, we could, let me not spill this, use my wild abandon jar and I could pull some slips and say, okay, we're going to use the kit and we're going to use, I mean, this jar is so fun because it, it kind of makes you uh, step out of your, what you had in mind, you know, a tree. Uh, some fussy cutting and some wire, you know, maybe we could do that 
along with it um, for some of the pages. I think that would be fun. What do you think? If we do, if we do that, we can maybe draw them in advance so you know what. Oh, bye, what Ellen. To bring. Thank you so much. So I'm glad you made it. Sorry, you have to go. Together. Um, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh no. I'm just saying that, you know, if we're going to use the prompt, if we're going to use the prompts, once we get our um, signatures done, if we're going to use prompts, maybe we can give you those in advance so that you know what, what to expect when you come to the stream. Yes. What to bring yes. with you so that you can craft and work along. So that jar we is all like that. a lot of fun. And I, we could play, you and I could play a game one day for everyone that's watching and we would have more of a timed where we have to find the things and get it done fast. And because what happens is you can't make a lot of uh, long decisions and you just have to do it. And you're just working like intuitively and quickly. And it's, it's a lot of fun. You never know what's going to come out. It's like um, a scavenger hunt. Basically. Yeah, kind of. But it's more timed than that. Um, let's see. I think I'm miss, missing. Yeah, maybe Susan. I have trouble sticking with it long enough. That's why we would do like maybe one signature. And then if anybody wants to do more signatures, they could. But Lexi, your first book should be one signature. I I mean. I, I think makes, so. I think yeah. one signature makes it very easy um you do not have to fret over you know placement yes. as much you know you're gonna fold it in half you're gonna you know stick your needle you know do do your punch hole and and roll with it and it's yeah. gonna be very simple and how many of us have um project boxes of things that aren't finished i mean i bet we all have one Ju julie's saying she has one B because we get excited about the next thing <laughs> we can't help it we're mixed media artists. That's what we do. You know, <laughs> I still think it needs more yellow. <laughs> I bet we all have one of those. <laughs> and you could follow someone exactly, or you can go your own way with it. Um, and no one would mind if you followed step by step exactly. I've seen you work, Lexi. You're more of an even person. Lexi was at the retreat. Um, and she is more even, aren't you? Her, her designs, she would have a square or a rectangle in the middle, but then she would have an odd number of leaves on there. But she she is more likely to line things up. And, and it might be good for you to just do exactly what we're doing at first until you get the swing of it. But I know that you'd be, <laughs> you would love it. Yeah, I think it's... Uh you know, when I first started doing it, I was just doing oh it inside of an, a, a structured journal uh -huh. and I was turning them into art pages. And then once I started making my own, you know, the first ones I made, they weren't perfect, but they're never, just they're not supposed time, to be. I mean, I've seen a big difference in the quality of what I can do. And it's all just because I've watched videos of people doing things and they say, you know, do this, don't do that. You know, when you get your basics down, once those pages are in there, you can do a lot of things, you know, to make them uniquely yours. However, don't ever think that yours has to be exactly like someone else's or it has to be perfect. You do you yeah. in the style that you like in the time that you decide making the choices that are favorable to uh, it for you. So everyone has a different style. Everybody has a different, you know, different way to go about it. We would just be going through the basic stuff together and you could say and give yourself permission. Um, I know some artists will put that in the beginning of the book and I love that they'll say, uh, this is um, my art journal and I give myself permission to make a mess, to make ugly pages and to, you know, like, I love that statement. It's so good. But this would be more of a, um, more of an art book, like a, a combination between an art journal and a junk journal, because that's kind of what I do. 
I can't just do one or the other. That doesn't work for me. <laughs> it doesn't work for me. <laughs> so I got some yellow here. It's kind of that rusty sort of brownie mustard color. I'm going to use this. And I've got a whole bunch of stuff left to spray still. Let's start with this. Yeah, I think we're all like children in the lolly shop in the candy store. <laughs> I think we are too. As a mixed media artist, we want everything. We want to try everything. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? Ooh, that's the color right there. Oh, it's pretty. I don't know why, when I decided I liked yellow so darn much. Now it needs some red, doesn't it? I go through spells. I mean, this this yellow that's on this paper that you liked, mm -hmm. that, that has been one of my favorite colors. That's kind of the color of our dining room, um, the lower part under the chair rail. The 70s uh, um, um, gold, not like gold it and yellow? It's not like color it is anyway. <laughs> <laughs> We, we don't right. eat in there except on special occasions. And now that everybody's gone, you know, we just, it's the That looks room. like, wait a minute. That almost looks like it's oxidized. Oh, that's looking good. Those are um, really pretty. That's I hope that you make an extra strip of those to send me. <laughs> do you want me to do that for you? I will. Yeah. I will. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> They're fun. I, I was going to say. I don't have any papers paper here. You what? You don't have any paper? <laughs> no, no. You know I don't have any papers here. Oh, I know you don't. You don't have anything. None of us have anything, do we? Susan said her favorite color is yellow. Um, oh, my God. That looks tedious. Oh, yeah. Kind of. Um, it's But it's that opaque um, mustardy yellow pigment. Ooh. And this right here is the golden uh, modeling paste. But my my um, tools were dirty when I put it on. So it's got that bit of turquoise in it. And I love it. And that's Rhonda's stencil again. Okay, let's try this one now. Yeah, you, you can't use one as a yellow car in the parking lot. Not easily. <laughs> I love what they're doing with the new cars. With the um, sort of, uh, they put the white under them. So they've got that pastel undertone. And that yeah. doesn't mean they're pastel colors. But it, it reminds me of nail polish almost. Where they have a more, it's a more opaque color. That's what's happening. What kind of pigment are you using? Did you say for it's for soap, Barbara? Um, and yeah, please put in um, caps if you have a question. I still need to do this one too. This is from an Etsy shop and it's actually made for soap, although you can probably get it many places. I just wanted it in really small amounts to experiment with. And the Etsy shop is Druitt's Soap and it's D R E W. H I T S S O A P Druids, that name right there. Druids soap, and I will add that to the um, to the description box as well, because I know there's some question. Okay, so if you wear if if you wear a yellow blouse and you have blonde hair, it makes your hair look dirty. Really? Mm -hmm. so I don't Parker's look very blonde. good in yellow. So I, I don't really wear a lot of yellow. I, I could wear mustard, but I don't really have anything in mustard. I mean, let's face it. I just wear black. <laughs> I just well, wear black. <laughs> I mean. Not really. But... I used to not wear orange. I used to not wear orange because orange. my aunt's hair was more red than brown. Uh -huh. And my mom told me I couldn't wear orange. So, you know, that's kind of how that rolled. But. Now I wear whatever color I feel like wearing. Good for you. Yeah. Um, it, it, it is different. You know, I shouldn't I, be able to wear pink as a redhead, but I do. Here, I'm going to do yeah, this. Yeah. Now, I used to wear a lot of pink, um, but I wear all colors. 
So I'm going to spray. I wear all colors at once. I'm wearing multiple colors today, but I do have that mustard color on. I've got, my top has zinnias on it, but it's what I wore to the car show, so. Oh, I love that sound. I had to dress nice to go to the church. Yeah, she went to a car show today, and there were so many cars. I can't believe she's not still there. There were 140 40 cars at their last count. And that's a lot. And that was at a, a country church. So it was really nice, though. It's amazing. That's a lot of cars at a church. It had to have been a big parking lot. It, it was full. It, they filled up the parking lot, and then they put us in the field across the street. Wow. So I'm going to pick up, I've got puddles of this over here, and I'm just going to pick some up because it's a mix of the colors. Sarah, um, yeah, when I worked at the bank, when I worked in banking, it was like, what am I wearing today? Black, black, or black? Because <laughs> yeah. it was always something black. It was either black pants or a black blazer, you know. We did, I do have a lot of black. We had to kind yeah. of blend in the, the environment there. <laughs> So this is just a roll off. I mean, you can make a roll off look really good just putting some texture paste over a stencil on it. Um, it just takes on a new life and and because you can't see what's underneath except for the variation in color. And I love that. That's why I love using these for um, die cuts as well. Exactly. Okay, let's see if some Lots of these are of nice dry stuff yet. going on. Um, so this one's not Rhonda, quite dry. My, my husband has a 57 Chevy that um, was his grandmother's car. And when she quit driving, it was given to him. And he drove it in high school. And it sat in our garage for 30 years while we raised our kids. And when we retired, officially retired, um, last year, we got it out. And we've got her, you know, back up on the road and running. But there were all kinds of cars there. Um, there were anything from uh, Model T's to, you know, more modern um, Corvettes, you know, a little bit of everything. There were even some tractors there because we were out in a rural, more rural area. So there were a couple of, of tractors and like homemade uh, buggy, doom buggy type things. Some of them. These ones are almost dry, but not quite. And I think I'm going to make one more color before we wrap it up. Um, and then I've got a, a many more of these with texture that I made this morning that ha don't have color on them yet. And okay. what I'll do is I'll put them on um, on my Instagram. So they'll go on my Facebook as well. Um, and probably on TikTok. So, uh, you know, the dry version of them. Look at that green coming through there. Rhonda, with, there's a man that photographs um, most of the car shows local in our area. When he gets his post up, um, if he, he'll probably be tomorrow, or it might be Monday since there were so many cars. But when he gets it up, I will message you with um, that so you can look at it because there were a lot of good, good, good cars there. I mean, very, very nicely preserved. Look at that color. This color is just the best green ever. It's almost turquoise. I mean, it's, it's just beautiful. Uh, I'm looking for an empty bottle here. Just anything empty. You know, I don't want to put it in the big one because I haven't decided what else goes in this one. Um, and it, it might be one of the sprays that I made today, one of the colors. I might decide that I would use more of like maybe the orange. Um, but I'm going to let those dry before I make any decisions like that, you know. Okay. Well, we're, we've got about two more minutes. Yeah. So I was just going to make one more spray here. And I've got to find a bottle for it. And I think what I'll do is use this one because I have two other water bottles over here already. Um, and this is just water in here. So we're going to go just a few minutes over. So this is going to end up with brown in it. And I do have some brown in that right there. And it could be just enough. Who knows? 
So a little green. Would you call that green or turquoise, guys? What do you think? I mean, it's it could go either way. It's so yeah. When striking. I mix that second blue in mine, it it it's more turquoise than it was, but it, it still turned out a pretty color. Yeah, and don't forget, you guys can use um, eyeshadow. You can use inks. Um, there are many things that you can use for your sprays to make your own sprays and it's so cheap to buy to get these bottles have you seen them on amazon just not these kind but the oh, they're empty not, bottles they're not very you get like 24 all. of them sometimes for 10 bucks or you know yeah i've amazing i ordered the spray bottles and i split them with bill because he had like little plate little stuff he wanted to do hey darcy hey darcy better late than never we're experimenting Hey, I followed some of your instructions and I turned out some pretty good papers. You I'm going to have to go see that go video. See. Yeah. So that was just a couple of crystals from the walnut um, crystals there for this. And I want to okay. clean this out because I want to make sure it's not as bright. That's, ocean, that's an ocean green is what you're going to end up with. kind of is. Um, if I put a drop of blue in there, it would be a really deep turquoise because it's so close. <laughs> well, you know, I, I mean, what what do you want to call it? Squirreling? I was squirreling yesterday. I, yeah, I'm squirrely today, if you guys can't tell. I, I am so slightly to get focused. Track room. Oh, crap. I need to squirrel all over this room and get it organized. I, I just, I, you know, it takes so long to do one corner. And, you know, I went thrifting with my mom Hi, on Mara. Thursday. Um, and I got some organizing stuff that's pretty fun. And I should do a haul, but I already started putting stuff away. Are we saying hello to someone? Oh, hey, Marta. I can follow your squirreling. We, we, we are very similar. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty squirrely. But you, you see, I've got it up here now. I don't know if you can how well you can see it, but um this was the packing down. paper from my Amazon package. And, yeah, uh, we should tell yeah. Lexi that too. We would be recycling if we did a journal together. Oh mostly. yes, Lex Lexi, yeah. you know, start saving like your um wrapping the papers that come in your packages start um, just when they come in, flatten them out. Don't iron them and roll them up because um, we'll we'll print some, you know, to use in our journals or possibly even a cover. I mean, if you and we want can also to use, use um, the bags, if you get like the the padded bags. Don't throw those away because you may decide that that's what you want to do for your cover. And they really make a nice sound. That little crispy sound. It, it really is nice. <laughs> and let's face it. They're all adult activity books anyway. So sound is important. <laughs> oh, Lexi already saves those things. Good. <laughs> Come on. Get in there. Get in there. Okay. I just know what it wasn't they say dark about enough, though. assuming you, you don't assume that somebody knows something. <laughs> Let me see here. Let's stir that up. You wasn't dark gotta enough. Leave us. Bye, Rhonda. Thank you for being here. We appreciate yes. it. Bye, Rhonda. Hey, if I haven't sent you that, uh, please email me. Um, I, ha I think I have, haven't I? It would be wonderful to have everybody do this with us. And thank you for the suggestion there, Lisa. Okay, hey, let's see what we got here. Ooh. Junk, junk, junk journals are G-rated. Yeah, yeah. Hey, what? we've had a G-rated live stream. So, Eddie, uh, I, I expect you to be stepping it up tomorrow. There were a couple times that I almost said something. And... Uh, uh, because it was, it was a, that was she, that's what she said moment, <laughs> but I didn't because it was too over the top. Eddie, you're losing your 
touch there. <laughs> you do have it. Okay. Well, yeah, it would be wonderful. And if you guys don't want to do a journal, you could do just a journal page. You could do um, a, a, like an art journal page with them. You could do a tag. You know, it could be look like a little accordion or whatever, but it would be a lot of fun. So please email me. We're just doing this one last one, guys. Please email me and let me know, uh, I mean, if you don't have it. I think Diane, so far, I think Diane's the only one. Julie, okay. do you have it? Do you have the file? And Darcy, we're we're talking about doing a journal. Um, oh, step by step along. Yeah, know, just like with step the by kit. step journal. And Darcy, have I sent you the uh, the texture junkies kit that my friend created? I can't remember. Oh, bye, Sarah. Thank you. Well, I have to. Oh, bye, Lynn. I'm saying wrong, bye to the wrong person. Bye, Lynn. Bye, Diane. Thank you so much. Yes, yeah, it's, it's dinner time. Yeah, no. I'm going Hi, over. Huh? Sometimes we're early or go under. Sometimes we go over. Okay. There we go. That's my color right there. Okay, I'm going to spray one thing here. Oh, I got the big boy out. So this is just a cereal box, gessoed. It's got texture paste on it. That's it. And I'm not even going to use my box because I don't think it'll fit in there. Come on. You know you want to. This is that patina color now because I put that little bit of brown in it. So oh, there it is. So hopefully it will dry a beautiful color and I don't have to put more green in it. But, it, you know, if, if, if it dries too light, I'll add a little bit more. Oh, look at that. I'm so excited. <laughs> and then, of course, we have our all over continuous spray. And there we have it. So when this dries, I will get a picture for you guys. I might put some gold on the ridges. So we'll see. But thank you so much, everybody, for um, joining us today and listening to me try to find my words. <laughs> I appreciate it so much. <laughs> um, Julie, Julie, I will please. resend it uh, yes. if I need to. <laughs> oh, there's a face in that, Sharon. Look at it. There's a face. Oh, it's got yeah, round eyes it. and a like a, a rectangle mouth right here. and a nose. Do you right? see it? Yeah, I see it. <laughs> <laughs> it also looks like a face. Yay. Words are hard. I don't know why they're hard for me today. I'm not sure. I haven't had enough coffee, maybe. I don't know. I slept. Yeah, hours it's very. Yeah, that that really is good. That's yeah. a journal page right there. That's a fun one. <laughs> well, I love yours too. Thank you so much, everyone. I hope you do go explore, experiment, play, get inspired by your mediums. You know, just have a lot of fun. And thank you for joining us. If you are new here, I would love it if you would subscribe, like, and share with your friends. Bring them all. Let's have a party. <laughs> Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you so everyone. much, Lisa. <laughs> You're welcome. Bye.